Hey everyone, I am Lisho and I am Pumelele and we are the creative directors and content producers for Do You Follow the Documentary? Um, basically the idea of the documentary came about when I was asked the question what do I think is the biggest problem that the youth of South Africa faces? And the answer I came up with was the issue of an identity. And I really unpacked that in my head and like the influence of social media popped up in my head. And I really just thought to myself, okay, more often than not, and I've been a victim of this as well, um, I've always just looked to other people's Instagram pages to see what I want my Instagram aesthetic to look like. Um, my dress sense is inspired by certain people. I'm always just like, okay, no, I'm undergoing an identity change so I need to dress like this and I need my grand to look like that and I figured I'm probably not the only one going through this and then that's basically what birthed this documentary. After that we decided to ask a couple of questions to a couple of people mm -hmm. and expand on that in terms of the documentary so what we unpacked is basically what are the highlights of um, people through social media channels, uh, what they struggle with, have they felt any pressure with regard to yeah. social media and yeah with that said we really went deep in the questions that nobody actually asks or that hasn't been documented before. With that said we'd like to welcome you to our documentary which Tiger. is called <laughs> Do You Follow The Documentary? <laughs> We live in a society that is overrun with the details of other people's lives. A person can also lose themselves in the lives of others. How can this be possible? The constant obsession with the lives of others both stifles our growths and limits our perspective. You find yourself constantly obsessed with what they are doing, what they are wearing, who is dating who, etc. And in the midst of this obsession, you forget about the most important person. You. What about your life? Nikia Pope. With all the platforms we have from, you know, back in the day, mix it to, to Instagram right now. Of all the platforms we have all been on, what is your, your favorite? Instagram. Definitely Instagram. Why Instagram? Less words. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for me it, it's been a platform of portraying how my life is as a stylish person mm. and you know I can also protect my personal life from the world out there so yeah it's you know it's the I, I see a lot of bios on Instagram that say, welcome to a billboard of my life. Mm -hmm. And basically that's what it is, mm -hmm. you know, just a splash of your life. And for me, it's the splash of <coughs> my stylish persona. Anyone else with a different platform that they fave or we're all just grammars? But I also think what he said was quite cool in terms of, it allows you to be a curator. It allows you, it allows you to play the game by your own rules. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think that was quite cool from what you guys had said. But I also think, um, in terms of the different platforms, you can't lie, Mix It was a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> it was a vibe. <laughs> when you put the whole um, away thing, and then you can just yeah, open it up, and yeah, just go yeah, to yeah. People used to do that back in the day just to, to distract people. You know? <laughs> but yeah, I think Mix It was definitely a, a, a good vibe. A lot of people's first relationships on Mix It, for example. True. Um, yes. Basi, do you want to say anything? <laughs> um, Dennis, what would you say um, some of your highlights are with using social media? I love the way I specific because people use it for different reasons. You know what I'm saying? People want to put their photos on. They want to put a portfolio or whatever. Um, but I I try and use it to connect with people. 
and I love how it, it's bridged a lot of gaps and I can share my story with people who are all the way on the other side of the world mm -hmm. but they still feel the love, they still feel the presence and they still feel like you know their voice and their story matters. So I think that's my favorite part of um, social media. If you use it right, you really get to connect with people, you know? I think my highlights are like seeing celebrities stories like Kim K's stories are like always my thing like seeing that and um, Chloe and Halle, but I think personal like favorite moments is like I think I get shocked by the amount of like love people actually have and like the comments and the DMs and you know there was this one moment where like a girl asked me about my body and she was like you're my body goals and I'm like I'm your body goals like what so that was <laughs> what would you say um, are some of your highlights using any of your favorite um, social media platforms uh, definitely being scouted. Um, I got this opportunity this one time to be a part of a model camp and they found me on Instagram. So, and it was a great opportunity. So I'm like, hey, we're growing. So definitely, yeah, being when scouted. You scared it was a scam? At first, yes, because I'm like, why are you in my comment section? And then they jumped right into the DMs, you know, it was very dodge, but I had to, um, read up on their, I'm going to call her a CEO because I'm not sure what to call her right now, but yeah, I read up on her and the terms and seats <laughs> that applied were legit, so yeah. We said, what would you say is the most challenging thing you've had to face when using um, your social media? Oh, um, well, for me as a creative, it's just kind of having the confidence to put your artwork out there mm -hmm. and being able to have some sort of like energy that's reciprocated to you because not always like you don't always find people understand your art and everything and I guess like social media kind of puts out some sort of like standard or expectation so like when you don't meet the normal criteria it's not always like positive feedback so that's kind of like um, been most like challenging thing I'd say is like just coming overcoming that fear and insecurity of putting my stuff out there some of my fears is that I feel like I have to maintain being consistent. I have to be relevant to maintain my viewership. So whether it be me posting weekly on YouTube, whether it be me posting every day on Instagram, stories, posting, I feel like I have to maintain relevance. Like, you know when you go on Instagram, guys, and you get there after swiping, you know, you're watching other people's lifestyles and how they're able to like afford certain things and how they're, they made it to a visa, a visa or something. And you're just, you're chilling at home, eating, <laughs> eating pop. <laughs> you know <laughs> and like you know when you're watching other kids like take pictures of their burgers or or you, or you see somebody who has everything you don't such as like a beautiful body which is every swipe that you see that's all you see you see a thin waist a flat stomach and a nice bum and a bikini you don't have a bikini you don't have that's expensive How much do you guys think of our self-worth and self-image do we put on, comes from our Instagram profiles, from our social media profiles? You know, how much of our self-worth do we really throw on it? Um, I think we've misunderstood that social media is a tool. It's, it's something you use to be an aid to something you were created. Um, people have put now social media as part of their lives that mm. defines them. Mm -hmm. So we always seek validation, like how many likes am I going to get, how many yeah. comments am I going to get. Right. Um, and we, we misunderstood the fact that it's just a tool for you to use um, in order to get your stuff out there, mm -hmm. reach people, to brand yourself. It's not something that should define you. Yeah. I can say. yeah. So people use it like as a comparison thing. I think that's mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. we all get it wrong. Like, if you put your self worth on the line there, and now you're comparing with everybody else, it's gonna be an issue later on because you'll realize that you can't maybe reach where Kim Kardashian is. You're not Kim. <laughs> you're not Kim. <laughs> Relax. Do you understand? And people wanna. They really think it's so real. And as Max said, it's a tool. So don't take it so seriously. 
that it makes it like your life. Mm -hmm. That can't be your life. That can't be where you get your validation or who you are. That can't be where you define yourself. And That's... also people just kind of forget <clears throat> that you're not going to put out like what you're going to do. So all your problems and your challenges mm -hmm. or whatever, yeah. you're always going to put like the all the good things, things out. And you forget that people actually have their own problems as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like what you see, what they put out there, don't compare it with your life because they're probably going through just as much as you are. They're just not willing to share it. Yeah. Millennials have been criticised, right, for letting their social media <coughs> accounts again just take over their lives. And there's an ad for a cell phone network out there that says, plays on the line of us being disconnected from each other. You know, how much, how much of this do you guys think is true? I actually think we're more connected than ever. It's just. We are so ideological about things. We sit in a restaurant, we look at a family and say, you know what, can you believe they're all sitting around and eating and they're all on their phones? Mm. The way the millennials and the generation just um, after us, I mean, they learn to communicate through these platforms. And I think it's, we can be ideological, they should not communicate like this. Or we can say, you know what, that is the way how it works. How can I get myself in this platform to communicate through the platform certain things that they can do in their life to make their life better? Whatever you want to push through your content. We can sit there and we can look at them and say, no, that's not how it should be. Or we can use those platforms and those connections to, to actually bring across a certain point. Because at the end of the day, it's not that social media is so bad. It's because social media is so good. Mm. It gives us that instant connection with people. And sometimes we lose that intimate connection. We can either moan about it, but I, I can promise you one thing, Mike. There's nothing we can do to stop this whole thing. This thing is, you can either get on the front of the roller coaster and enjoy the ride and just use this thing to the best of your ability and try to push empathy and gratitude and positivity through your platform, or you can sit and, I almost wanted to say, you can mm and moan about <laughs> that's going on and point fingers at social media saying people are disconnected, or you can use it for your advantage. Then how do we balance off actually being present, for instance, you mentioned at a dinner table. Mm. How do we balance being present with the company you have around you at mm. the dinner table versus capturing what is happening around you? When we go to concerts, we're on our phones, we're capturing that moment as well. You know, you're shopping, you're capturing that moment. Mm. You're driving, you're capturing that moment when your favorite songs play. How do we strike the balance of, you know, creating that personality on that platform mm. and actually being really present with in whatever moment you're capturing? I think it just comes down to authenticity. Um, are, you, are you authentic in the moments which you document of your life? Um, mm. And if so, are you able to use that as a reference just to go back and say, Okay, this is what happened in the, at this point in time, but it's not like you know, um, you you've lived in the moment, so it's not like it's it has consumed like your time entirely spent there. You know what I mean? So it's just like just like finding a balance between documenting your life and just making it as authentic as possible. You know? I like to take snaps beforehand, so like I can actually like put my phone away. You know, so like if I'm like at a restaurant with my family, I'd like take snaps, take snaps, take snaps, take snap all the food and then phone goes away. You know, like I think it's just you have to be in control. I guess you can't let social media like rule you. Like if I have a cute outfit, I'll take a picture of it like before I leave or like, you know, before I go somewhere or at the venue and then it's like, okay, it's time to put your phone away. I don't think it's ever been like a huge issue like, oh my gosh, I'm on my phone 24-7. Like it's all about social media.
Anyway, also, um, I think based on what you're willing to share on Instagram, so if I'm, a, I'm portraying myself as a brand, I can't be posting everything else on my stories because now it's going to be in conflict with the brand that I'm trying to push. So if I'm going to post stories of me driving, of me at the dinner table, of me at a party, it's in conflict, in conflict with the content that's already on my um, page, right? So I think there's always a silver lining in everything. So if you want to share your life, then your Instagram or you, whatever platform that you use must portray your life, mm. must portray whatever you want to share. So if you want to be at home, you want to show what you're driving, you want to show what you're eating, your friends, the people you hang around with, then that's that. If I'm a brand, then I know at a dinner table, I'm not going to whip out my phone and start Instagramming the food we're eating, um, what my friends look like, what they dress like, because it's not in line with the brand that I'm trying to put forward. So basically, there are boundaries to that as well. We always yeah. have to be mindful of the person we're portraying. Yeah. In terms sure. of the authenticity, yeah. 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 I feel like it's like I'm working, so I can't do this. Do you understand? I'm hearing what you said, it sounds so smart, and it sounds so brilliant, and I'm like, I get you, I get you, but the entire time my mind's like, that sounds like so much pressure, because yeah. yeah. you gotta be yeah. like, here, this is where we're at, and then here, it's a different story, which is also a good thing, because then there's like that silver lining, as you mm -hmm. mentioned, because it's a thing of, when you're home, you just get to be home, because there's no pressure of you being this person on social media. I get that. But at the same time, we still want you to be human, mm -hmm. even if you yeah. are this brand or, yeah. you know, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. And then also with... able to, like, relate to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd just like to disagree with Franco. Mm -hmm. I think we're losing people um, by but using the social media. Thing. Thing. Pardon? But the disconnection thing. Yeah. I think, especially amongst the younger generation, Children would much rather be on social media now than actually engage with other children. And I think we're starting to lose them and, yeah, I don't know how comfortable I am with that. Mm. As a publisher as well, um, I'm actually looking, <laughs> I'm actually looking, well, I see Twitter as actually a storybook. It may sound really weird, but um, people are telling a story, but just not in a traditional way. Yeah. And um, that's the same with Instagram. Mm. And sometimes people are investing too much in the story instead of living in the moment. Mm. So, as mm. you said, it is about striking the balance, but at the same time, we can't be losing people. We can't be at a dinner table and someone has a problem, but they'd much rather tweet about it than tell us face to face. Mm. I think with that, um, for me, I think digital literacy is so important. We should really teach people how to use this stuff. Mm. With that said, who's going to do it? <laughs> like, no one's going to sit around and say, okay, this is the vision for everyone. At the same time, I think discussions like these are very important because mm. then you understand maybe, maybe I've been going about this the wrong way. Maybe I'm a bit too much about it. So I think the younger generation, as you say, they use it a bit too much. <laughs> it's a bit hectic. And we, I didn't grow up with that. I didn't grow up, so I can put my phone away and you know hang with my friends. But I really feel like other people don't have the opportunity to do that, and it's our job to educate that. And it's the same with even privacy on social media and the security on social media. I feel like everyone should one educate themselves, and if you can't educate yourself, educate others so they can get an opportunity to do so. People seek different stuff from social media. Yeah. Yeah. Some people it is validation. Some people it's you know disattention all that type of different stuff so you need to also be mindful you know of that some people seek meaning on social media but that's not everybody else that's yeah so also the someone same could just be a if someone's like kimmy yeah. nothing and they want to post then <laughs> 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 that's the question that they ask yeah. and it's it's it's, yeah. it's perfectly fine but it goes back to just understanding you know why you're doing it i think the important thing too is before you post anything maybe a story a post a vlog whatever to ask yourself the question, what specifically is the reason why I'm posting this? Mm. And I mean, the quality of your life is determined by the quality of questions you ask yourself. Mm. So if, if, if you delve into those questions, 
what specifically is the reason I now want to take a, a video of Lissetti eating his food? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it for me just to show my lifestyle? Is it for me, what do I want to portray in that post? Like, what's my end goal? And reverse engineering that whole thing and using as much distribution platforms and methods to get to that end goal. And that's why people don't know the end goal. They can't reverse engineer the process and they just, they're in no man's land. They just put things out there. Yeah. yeah. You find people deleting their Instagrams, deleting everything, restarting again, still not happy, <laughs> deleting everything, <laughs> and still not happy. That's exactly just what exactly the end goal. Yes, <laughs> so true. And I think it also ties in with the validation thing as mm, well. Yeah. Okay, this is not being received the way I thought mm. it would be received. So. Oh, it's been an hour. Check it out. Ten minutes. Minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just for, for example, like, okay, what specifically is the reason I want to put this out? No, I just want to show the world that I'm having a good time. But then delving deeper into that question saying, okay, what specifically is the reason that I want to show the world that I'm having a good time? Um, sure, because maybe I don't know, because this is good. You take that answer and you ask, what specifically is the reason you want to do that? And then what you'll find is, start to get to know yourself, Ooh, maybe I'm using social media to get validation in the outside world. And that makes me ask everybody at the table mm. if we could represent our true selves, is that what I or whoever would be currently seeing on your social media? I mean, social media is based on what we want to show people, so it's definitely your choice what part of your life or the, which, if you show the people the good or the bad. So, yeah, I feel like we, some people might, some people might not, but I feel like the majority is just showing the good and the exciting parts. Yeah. Okay, here's my thing, right? I'm going to be personal about it. I choose to show um, the way I dress, right? And I'm not lying to anyone because what you see is what you get. Hence, I don't choose to show me at home, me going to the mall, me going to a party. It's me on campus. And if you come to campus, you will find what you see on Instagram. So I'm not lying to anyone. I'm not portraying an image that I'd like to conform to. Because, like I said, what you see is what you get. Mm. And yes, you find people who portray themselves in ways that are completely different to who they are. Person says they live this life, this is who they are, but you meet them in actual person, it's completely opposite person stays at a back room, not that it's a bad thing, but they stay in the back room, everything they have is borrowed from someone, you know, they, they don't have anything to themselves, but their social media presence is so great that when you look at your life and you look at theirs, there's a huge gap. Okay, with the Slakey, bless, uh, blessy culture that's going on, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that is. <laughs> okay, I'll explain. Am I actually well equipped to anyone who can explain? Okay, I'm just going to answer the, ask the question and I'll explain. So with the slay creed, bless the blessing culture, how much of that is fueled and influenced by social media? Do you think Okay. Can you explain what a bless the blessing and like a slay queen is? Can I just say what like a Blessing and the slay queen, is there a difference or do you guys see it as one? Difference. Right. Difference. Okay. Could, we Could just... be same WhatsApp group. Can we <laughs> just explain yeah. it? Um, does anyone feel equipped to explain that? In basic terms, right? It's about <coughs> sugar daddy and the sugar baby. The baby. <laughs> baby. Yes. So you get involved no, the female counterpart that comes with the sugar daddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a place a place um, mm. phenomenon. And then with the slay queens, mm. basically girls who are always 
speaking, so. <laughs> they get money. They get no way. Let me get let me get you know this. Just basically, pretty girls always have nice hair, always have um, nice nails, always pretty. Mm, just like always crazy. Yeah, always have these beautiful bags and sunglasses <laughs> and just yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So that's your so definition of a slave queen. That's what you view a slave queen as. The reason I'm asking is that we had a debate um, at Lille should be in a few weeks ago about mm. slave queens, blessed species. And I remember a lot of the girls saying that initially it started because of, we were just trying to like encourage each other. So if you're slaying in school, work, whatever, in your life in general, we would say yes, girls, slave slave queen. you're a slave queen because okay. you're slaying yeah. whatever you're doing, right? And then it kind of just shifted and then it became the girl with the weave and the nails and all of that and I just... And it started becoming the girl with those things who gets them from... from mm. some person yeah. and or okay. not even sometimes apparently because apparently you can be young and still be a blizzard and whatever the case is. And you don't have to be that old man who's married and everything but still goes out and gets younger girls and just feels like splurging on them or whatever. So, yeah. What's your definition of a slay queen? So my definition of a slay queen is basically um, girls that most of them don't actually have jobs and they have basically blessings. I mean the T's and C's that they have with their blessings is something different. But they basically slay and that's what they do. That's that's their mm. job to slay from their outfits and they obviously show us on Instagram taking photos in front of al expensive alcohol alcohol that yeah. they didn't even pay for, you know. Um, <laughs> yes. And uh, they even their outfits as well, Gucci and they even travel as well, going to Dubai, going to even um, other like five star um, what you call it five star hotels around um, South Africa as well but they do nothing you know and but I mean that that's the whole idea they're queens that they slay and people they're also like mini influencers on their grams mm. and you know um, they you know whenever they wear certain outfits or nails or their hair or whatever they actually just slay that's what they do and so you are slay queen so like if you're just slaying in life now you're a slay queen also you are but then I feel like there's uh, there's different categories. I mean, also like my, like sometimes if you slay and if you your outfit is popping, then you can be slaying, but you're not necessarily a slay queen. That I feel like it's a, even a derogatory mm. term. Yeah, That's why people run away from it so much. No, exactly, and nobody wants. I personally don't want to be called a slay <laughs> queen. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Question: Define a slay queen. A slay queen. A slay queen is someone that's always looking good. Weave, nails, iPhones. And at the same time, she's the blessee of the blesser. That's what I would say as lay queen is. Someone that just, yeah, someone that just lives life through hustle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a hustle. King, a, fee, a diva is a female version of a hustle. A diva. <laughs> a hustler. Is there a difference between a blessee and a slay queen? Ja, I use blessee to describe slay queen, so I'd say very the same, very relevant to each other. Okay. Relevant to each other. <laughs> They're the same thing, bro. <laughs> Okay, so do you want to start with like just defining if you asked them um, if there is a difference between a slay queen and a blessed sea? Yeah, I feel like you could be a slay queen. Okay, well, if we were running with the definition of nice nails, nice hair, whatever, you can be a slay queen without being a blessed sea. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, personally, my parents provide for everything that I have. I don't need to go find another man to do all of that, in, you know? And I don't have to like do anything like sleep with him in order to get those things. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's not a, a and it's not a bad thing, therefore I guess from the definition you're giving us, to be defined as a slave queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just yeah. maybe the new context that we've given to it. So is it a bad thing um, to be a place? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> is it? I do I don't wanna like speak too much because that's not my experience and mm -hmm. that I'm not even a woman to mm -hmm. begin with. So there's not much that I can actually say. But when what I will comment is that I don't see like sexual using sexual liberation as a tool to get what you want. So um, I don't judge people. I don't know the situations mm -hmm. exactly. and I don't know the circumstances which led them to do whatever it is or mm -hmm. live whatever kind of lifestyle they want to take. So <clears throat> for me it's like I just think it would be unfair to see them as synonymous. Mm. I can't really say much about the 
basically, but it would be unfair to be like a slay queen and a blessing on that yeah. same group. Do we think that the culture is perpetuated? Yeah, by social, by social media. Definitely. Because social media is all we're being exposed to that is really defining the narrative at that time. You know, a lot of these people might not have thought about these things from their own mind. And because they saw it periodically and all the time, it became a conversation. So I definitely think it is. Um, sort of influenced by that. And someone, like a lot of people, are, might just be a snake queen on the ground, you know? Mm -hmm. And then they give people back their stuff. Yeah. And then they <laughs> in real life, you know? I mean, also, what we're exposed to on social media, we're exposed to the bonangs, the cannibals, the, the yeah. it girls, you know? And they're snake queens in their own rights. Mm -hmm. And so here comes this little girl who aspires to be like them and a quick way out is to be a blessee. Mm -hmm. And so she becomes a blessee and through being a blessee she becomes a slave queen. So sometimes the two merge and become one. And then they get the attention. And then they, and get, they the get the attention. Yeah. And then next minute she has a TV <laughs> job as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then she becomes an actual slave queen. <laughs> <laughs> standard that the world has generally put up have more of a voice now mm -hmm. to appreciate that you know um, so I guess in a sense like I think now we're appreciating uh, different kinds of beauty now more than ever you know we're going against the standard of you have to be slim to be beautiful or you have to be light skinned to be beautiful you know all those things so I guess in a sense uh, social media also gives a voice and um, a platform to kind of like break you know, the standards that have been placed up. Is there a standard of beauty that you feel is propagated by social? Why do you think this is? Um, I think a standard of beauty is like a whole beat face. Um, I know I have a beat face right now. But it's like most pictures, it's like you have to beat your face or look a certain type of way, you know, like eyeshadow and eyebrows and like lipstick and contouring and it's like <sighs> I just want to have a fresh face sometimes but it's like not a fresh face gets like that many likes and there's like you have like amazing skin um why do I think this is um I don't know it's like just a standard norm now it's like if you're not a youtuber doing makeup or if you're not like always wearing makeup or if your pictures don't have makeup it's just like eh, you know it's it's I. And that concludes Do You Follow the Documentary. With that said, thank you for being part of the whole experience. We'd like to thank everybody. Please don't forget to join the conversation. Let's expand on what social media means to all of us. Admirable. Admirable. Mm. Quite. Admirable. I, <laughs> I said I'm not on to I admire. <laughs> Say this word. Admirable. <laughs> How are we going to edit this? Admirable. <laughs> 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 I read all of So so much for coming through. Um, you said you wouldn't do that. You said you wouldn't cry. <laughs> um, your opinions are valid. 
you know. Um, we had a good conversation. I'm happy. I'm really, really happy with how this went down. And, uh, yeah. Hot ways, like get out of here. <laughs>